In the wee hours of March the 5th, 2015, I was elected president of the Cambridge University Students' Union, QC for short, <laughs> thank you. And thus I became the first black woman to fill the position with the... <laughs> with the highest election turnout in over a decade. When I agreed to speak at Dream Nation, I had been in my post for just over a week, and today I'm two months in, and continuously excited by the challenges and lessons of university governance and student representation. But indeed, as I'm sure you can grasp, everything is still so new. And so when I was invited, I find myself asking, what might I communicate about my motivation and what drives me, even though, excitingly, I consider my end destination to be unknown. Tonight I want to share one lesson on the meaning of leadership I learned from running to be a representative. I want to talk about how my dream was, and I believe must be informed, by the practical realities of those I represent in order for my position to hold any currency at all. When I threw my hat into the ring to become president, the dream was simple. I had had an amazing time at Cambridge University, but as a member, an active member at that, of two campaigns, the Women's Campaign and the BME, Black Minority Ethnic Campaign, I had become acutely aware of how varying levels of privilege impact on one's ability to write their own story. So, what I committed to then, for the next year, a big task I know, was building a student platform dedicated to equality of opportunity. This is both within and to the to Cambridge University, regardless of one's gender, ethnicity, parents' professional status, socioeconomic background, and the list does go on, as we all know. The most important example of this commitment were those policies I ran on, which target the stigma surrounding mental health provision to the detriment of those students who have pre-existing or newly discovered conditions. In any such instance, any student deserves high quality and tailor-made pastoral support. And I ran on this because I believed then, as I believe now, that for equality of opportunity to have any meaningful value as a concept, it must accept that the access needs of every individual differ and each student must be equipped to fulfill their potential. And so, packed with my convictions and hundreds of flyers, I s it seemed obvious to me that this campaign for QC president was about me leading. I was to direct the narrative and lead hundreds of volunteers and I was to lead in the student polls and I was to dominate the student press. And this, I decided, would define my excellent capacity to lead and in turn, my excellent capacity to do the job well. So when, for example, the campaign of another candidate exploded into the student press, I was sure that this was somehow an indication of my failure to lead. At that moment, the gains of my own campaign meant very little. The, the strategy I had put together didn't incorporate someone else doing very well. And this was supposed to pan out the way I had planned it because it was supposed to pan out the way I had planned it. Lucky for me, though, the organic nature of the campaign trail meant I was fortunate enough to catch myself confusing leadership with control. I say organic because it was inevitable that I would never be able to control the unique ways in which so many people would endorse my campaign, many of whom I had never met with little to no directive input from myself. Nothing made this clearer to me than the endorsement of one student who, having taken a year out due to a mental health disability, had endorsed my welfare policies in a heartfelt Facebook post. For some, this was a small gesture, but to me it realigned the focus. Was this campaign about me doing things my way or actively learning from the lived experiences of those I dreamed of representing? So then it was clear. To win this election, I needed to watch, listen, and follow, as well as lead. In the most practical sense, this meant two things. Though I consider my closest peers, who day in, day out stand beside me, I needed to let them lead in their area of expertise. There was really no space for pride when I had no idea how to coordinate the Saturday lecture rush of hundreds of mathematicians. I had gone on my own once to lead, nearly to be crushed by a stampede of students, anxious to enjoy the rest of their Saturday and not talk to me at all. So fearful the next time round, I could have hidden behind Precious as she thrust the flyer upon every single student that day. Where my confidence lacked, hers led. Secondly, I had to follow the day-to-day -day trail of each person who volunteered on my campaign. 
What they offered was access to their academic networks, friends, and hangouts. Yes, hitting the main lecture sites was non-negotiable, but what I had to learn to do was geographically follow what seemed to be an expertise honed purely through a volunteer's navigation of their day-to-day -day life studying at the University of Cambridge. One such opportunity led me, only some minutes before voting closed, down the cobbled pathway which opened up into a dining hall where I was able to intercept almost 100 students. And this was in 20 minutes and every vote counted. Had my leadership meant control and doing things my way, I would have never tapped into these opportunities and meet students, listen to them and convince them that now I really did understand the value of watching, listening and following their expertise. And so, election week for me meant spending a lot of time on my bike, rain or shine, dropping off those prized and expensive promotional materials, asking questions about what or where I may go next, and what individuals needed from me to turn the campaign hype into votes. And when March 5th came along, the practical implementation of this learning curve turned my dream into reality. One does not have to look very far to find those really common stereotypes of students as unknowing or you know, having very little experience of life on the ground. However, I learned just how broadly expertise can and should be defined, particularly in the context of being a student representative. Following unique perspectives, the sum of which in my case really is the student voice, shaped how I won the election and must inevitably be pursued in the year to come if I am to do my job well. Perhaps the bottom line for me, I can say then, is that my drive is nothing but fueled by the desire to equip others with what they need to reach their own academic destination and beyond. So, when you learn you don't have to be the expert in all fields, things start to take shape. That's what I've learned. Inevitably, in following the student voice, I will develop my own expertise, and for that, I'm extremely excited to find out what the year has to come. Would you like to be at our next event? Visit dreamnation.co.uk and join our free mailing list in the top right-hand corner. You will receive exclusive content and free updates on future projects so that you'll never have to miss out again. Work hard and keep dreaming.